and we are live, gentlemen, gentleman, just one, just Solo. one gentleman. Solo, Solo baby. Hey, uh, welcome back to another episode of the Mecca of Banter podcast. Uh, I'm this week's host, Henry Wind. You can find me on Twitter at Henry Wind. Um, what a great time of the year for sports, like not just footy. But sports, we have the NBA playoffs, we have the Stanley Cup finals, the Euros officially started on Friday, we have the Copa America coming up this weekend, and we have the MLS season. Uh, it's fantastic. I'm intentionally leaving off baseball. If you know, you know. Um, <laughs> we don't talk about that here on this podcast. Um, so much to dive into today. I'm happily joined by the one and only Andy Hoover. How are you doing today, big guy? Good, man. Happy to be here. Uh, I always love having all the guys on, for sure. It, it makes the banter better. But some of these two-man you know, spots go really smoothly. Uh, you Special. just really get to connect on a, on a you know, personal level. So happy to be here. Uh, the content has been insane. The content <laughs> from, from this Euro tournament has been so good. I've not been able to get off Twitter, which I usually can't anyway. But especially now, um, I'm having a really good time. Too bad my local team is not reciprocating the feeling that I'm putting out to this uh, podcast right now. But Preach. really excited to be here. Happy to happy to chat it. Come on now. And like you said, sometimes the two people uh, podcasts run really smoothly. And speaking of smoothly, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to announce that smooth sack season is officially upon us. Smooth Woo! sack summer is officially upon us. Ooh. And when you're playing in the summer sun, make sure you're groomed from pubes to bun. How about that? Make sure you're groomed it? from pubes to bun. Uh, thanks to our friends over at Manscaped, you can make this season your smoothest yet. The Performance Package 5.0 Ultra is the ultimate bundle to keep your boys downstairs cool while looking hot. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Get 20% off and free shipping when you go to manscaped.com and use the code MECCA20. That's M-E-C-C-A-2-0. And make summertime and the trimming is easy. Woo! Hey, Manscaped. that's a good one. Manscaped. Yeah. We're that out was a here. great one. I'm in. Thank you. And Smooth it sack is summer. Smooth sack summer. It is necessary. I'm seeing a lot more of the pool uh, yeah. recently. And as a as yeah. a aficionado of five inch inseams, you you gotta just you can't you gotta cover yourself. You gotta cover gotta yourself. Let it happen. Uh, and you know, I will and, say that there 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 is now a higher use of the ball deodorant at now yeah. that we're in June, middle Dude, of June in St. Louis, Missouri is so is no hot. joke. So I sweaty. Actually, I, I was just talking to a friend uh, earlier today, not about their balls, but just about the fact that St. Louis <laughs> weather is insane. They just moved here from San Diego, which you would think California is hot and all that shit. But like there, yeah. there's like this coastal breeze. So it was always like moderate. It was never like overly hot. So they're like, I don't know how you do this. I'm like, uh, I don't either. Four seasons, I guess. It, I guess that's what's uh, the appeal. That's what we get. I mean, the spring was great. This is the best yeah. spring that we've had in years. Say that so word, baby. It was, Say that word. It was only a matter of time uh, before we got absolutely roasted, and it is happening. So speaking of roasted, ball, boys. Yeah, roasted segues us into St. Louis City. Hey, roasted in Dallas. Oh, roasted uh, in Dallas. We lost two nothing. So it's interesting, right? Like I, I watch every game of St. Louis City. Obviously, like it's a huge passion of mine, and I also feel like now at this point, it's kind of like our job. So like pay attention to what's going on. And so we're able to talk about it or whatever. I completely blacked out what the score of this game was. It could have been zero, zero. It could have been five, nothing, but it was two, nothing. Um, and I think that that's just kind of where I am. Like the season's halfway over as of this game, like after this game, it was the halfway point um, of the MLS season. And I feel like I've just hit this point of, um, I went on a little bit of a rant on our Twitter after the game of like, or I guess 12 hours after the game of like some of my thoughts. But my major point that I'm feeling at this time is like the front half of the season is just a complete bust for me. And the only thing that I'm like clinging on hope to is that we bounce back after the league's cup. Once we get our transfers in 
um, and hopefully pick up momentum and steam heading into what I hope will be playoffs, but we don't even know that. Um, so two nothing was the scoreline in Dallas. Um, we got beat by a team that we should never get beat to. And there's a lot of storylines of this game. Um, but I think we got to get the first ones out of the way. Huge, huge, huge losses of both Nilsson and Celio. Um, I, as far as I know, I haven't heard what Nilsson's injury was. Maybe it was a pulled hamstring or a torn hamstring. I don't know. But we do know that Celio got fucked up. I think it was a broken fibula and a complete ankle dislocation, which is no joke. Um, so shouts out to our, our fellas there. Yeah, man. And and if you've listened to this this pod and these guys at all, Celio has been our favorite player. It's been no question. Like it, it I seriously had just the tightest gut feeling watching those stretchers come on. And like, it, I mean, personally, everything that I've heard about this guy, even my dad, Doug Hoover, listens to 101 ESPN and catches some soccer talk here and there. And everyone's just like, he's the best guy. He's the best guy ever. He loves everyone in the locker room, loves him. He's the first, he's the joker. You know, he's the, he's the feel good guy. And it just so happens that he was one of the first names on the team sheet this this entire year. So we we lost, I mean, what you could say is the fabric of the club. You could tell. And anytime any one of those guys goes down with one of those, you know, extremely severe injuries, it's gonna change the it's gonna change the game, regardless of how you respond. Every single one of those players looked like they didn't want to be there after that. And I get that a hundred percent. I you know. A lot of what I had to say, I think, today is overshadowed by the fact that the game has a completely different outcome, in my opinion. Does that, you know, not happen in the beginning of the game? So, um, a huge shouts to him, and, and who knows if he's listening ever, but we love you. We're praying yeah. for you. We know there's going to be a strong comeback in the future. Yeah. Um, we want to see him dance again. He's going to yeah. dance again. And it's a, it's a weird thing because, like, yeah, the, the mental side of that and recovering in the moment is insane. Like, you know, my my sports career ended on that. I, I broke my leg my senior year in a game, you know, in the first half of the game. And, like, my teammates had to finish the game. And, like, they all told me how weird of a game that was where you know that, yeah. like, one of your boys is, like, laid up in the hospital right now because you see the injury and you're like, yo, that is – not it. And then you still have to be like mentally resilient to come and try to like work through adversity. So it's tough. Like we were up against it for sure in that game. And then yeah. what was it early second half, or maybe it was even in the first half. I don't even remember. Like Nilsson yeah, goes down half. with like, he pull, pulls up chasing a ball down. And that's another one where anytime there's an injury, it sucks. Like it sucks to see one of your boys get hurt. But with him, he had such a dramatic comeback last year with like the ACL injury. And then he came back and like, you could tell how much that meant to him and the team. And then this year there were some injury problems and you just see like one of those guys go down. I just, I feel like it was one of those like defeating moments of like, fuck, like not again, this is like happening yeah. again. And it's, it is like a big mental thing. And like, yeah, I guess like in the space since the game, like, I think there's always a time and space to be critical and we'll get there. Like there's definitely enough yeah. to be critical about this game, but I feel like my empathy level for the group has grown in the last 48 hours. Like as I've distanced myself from that game and I don't know, it's going to take a lot for these boys to rally back and come back Wednesday night against Colorado. Like it's going to be a big mental, mental turnaround. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, what's the squad look like? No you, idea. Like it's seriously with, with what he provided on the field, Salio specifically, and and I felt, um, you know, we've been critical of Thorson, very critical of Thorson, and we're not, and I'm not hiding that at all. And I do think we'll get there too. I thought he was not terrible uh, in in this game specifically, probably the best showing we've had. But you know, bar's not high for sure. No. Um, but you, seeing Josh Yarrow come on, that's a little bit of that solidity back into the back line. The guys know him. The guys know what he's going to do. The guys know how he plays. Um, I, I felt good seeing him come on. And and to be fair, too, he had a really good game after that, as far as I can see. There's minor lapses across you know the entire back line, but he was admirable. Um, friend of the pod. Love Josh. Great guy. And you know it's going to be those types of guys that help carry him through. It's going to be Lowen. 
I mean, good Lord, after that personal hell that he's been through, yeah. now we're looking at for him, you know, to him for strength. And uh, uh, yeah, where do you go? Tim Parker, you know, Berkey, these guys are just going to have to step up and, and be locker room presences and, yeah. uh, you know, pull them through to Wednesday. Yeah. It, it, we're, I feel like we're in such an odd position. So, like, the lineup, like you said, first thing, I don't even know what the lineup's going to look like, you know, by choice, um, by the way, by choice, not by injury and not by, you know, yellow card accumulation, whatever. Akil Watts played left back, a position that he doesn't play. He's a center midfielder turned back up to the backup right back. And now he's our starting left back because – Carnell either just wanted a rest for Markanich or just Markanich has lost the position. And then we still don't even know what the fuck is going on with Dewar because Dewar wasn't even on the trip. He didn't even make the reserves. Um, as our, our good friend Tactics with Michael uh, pointed out on his most recent installment, like Nicholas Dewar is a guy that's played in every single European competition but can't even make the travel squad for the MLS. So, you know, the psychology side of me the like therapy side of me i'm like man i just want to like sit down and have coffee with that kid to see what the fuck is going on um but you have to imagine going into wednesday's game we're looking at a back line of probably watts again um i don't think that he it's a toss-up it'll be watts or markanich i I don't know they both bring different things but then you're looking at yarrow and parker because that's all we have by the way like we have nerwinski i guess as a backup totland will be the right back we'll go back to to Durkin probably, and we'll have Leuven and Kojima probably. And then you get to what do you do with Klaus? Because he hasn't exactly set the world on fire. And I know that there's different opinions. Like if you read Twitter, you listen to our podcast, you listen to other people. It sounds like what to do with Klaus is literally a 50-50 split in our fan base right now. There's half the fans and maybe you fall into this category, maybe you don't, but like it's like this like 50% is like he is that guy, he's quality, he's getting zero help, there's zero service, and I can see all of that stuff. And then there's 50% who think that he's really wasteful or like not trying, for lack of better terms. And I think regardless of like where I fall into those, you know, two halves, I think it's it's just not working. You know, yeah. and more, more than I love Klaus, I love winning. And more than I yeah. love individual players, I need to see results. And so, like, I almost think going into Wednesday, I think you start saying, I think. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, we're, you know, in, in modern football and the way this rolls, you got to have rotation. It's a, it's a hot summer, and these are going to be some hot games. And these guys are, you know physically going to need some rotation. So I think you absolutely one of these games, you 100% start Sam. I I am in the camp that Klaus is the guy. Um, And I think it's more because I don't feel that Sam is the guy. Um, And it's, you know, it it goes back to the the conversation that we've had all years. They're different players. They have different profiles. They provide different things. Um, When Sam's on the field, we can play direct. That's, that's cool. I'm not expecting Klaus to make those 20, 30 busting, you know, breaking back line runs and, and beat a guy um, like I would a little bit more with Sam. So in some capacity, there's going to be rotation. Sam's going to play one of those games, but then you have to cater a little bit to it. When we see the best of Klaus, it's when he is combining. It's when he's getting on the ball. It's when he's creating space for other players. Um, and he has been wasteful. I think there's a world where you can say he's the answer and still not necessarily, you know, be beating his drum this year. He's, yeah, like, he's yeah, been you don't misfiring. have to say he's the best player in the world. Like, he has no. been wasteful. He's been misfiring. He's, again, creating chances. He's he's in and around the box. He's active. Uh, he's not tucking the ones that I, you know, was watching him tuck last year. Um, and we haven't really seen a ton of Sam. I, I, I think Carnell kind of would agree with what I'm saying is that our profile fits Klaus, but we're going to have to change because one, we don't have any other strikers right now other than, you know, some of the, some of the city B guys who, again, you can't ex- place that expectation on. Uh, I thought Johnny Klein looked admirable as well when he came in. Um, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm confused on his position a little bit. I guess he, we're all so fluid with the front three in my mind yeah. that, 
you know, I don't know what his position Thorson plays either. Like they're just no. they just kind of put him out there. Um, I did. There was a funny comment from one of the commentators in the ML the the game uh, last weekend. Johnny Klein was really close to getting his head on a on a low and cross, and yeah. and the commentator goes, "Just missing a few inches there because my yeah. man does not have the height." And no, he was he in a great he was in a great position. He was right he on it. He, like, he, jumped. he got up. Like, he got, oh yeah. yeah, he got way up. I mean, seriously, it, this guy's three more inches. That's a, that's in the back of the net. That it was yeah. it was a great run, great yeah. ball. He just was never going to get there. Um, yeah. But you know, I, it's like. What do you what do you expect? You know, like we we've seen all this negativity, and before we get to you know where our tune changes and and we look at what could be going forward, which I think is there's a lot of really positive aspects to talk about. We're talking about a, a run of games here before July 18th that we gotta just we gotta just grind through, and there's not a lot of things, especially after this game, that you can look at and be like, ah, we're fine. You know, yeah. um, so we're going to be relying on City B guys. Uh, Wenzel, I think, is probably going to be in the mix at center back. Yeah. He'll, he'll probably be on the bench. Um, you know, a few of those things are positives, but seriously, the next couple of games, two at home up quick here, like, it's just give me, give me three points out of six, bro. Like, yeah, give me, we'll give it. me, give me four points out of the next three. I, you know, like, I, my expectations until July are are, are low. As yeah. you know, yeah. what have they given us for them to be? Um, mm-hmm. But everybody else in that team is capable. Like that. That's yeah. the thing. We can sit here and be all doom and gloom and be like, "Oh, shoot, we're relying on these City B guys." But realistically, I know for a fact this squad can grind out a couple of wins, and they're not going to be pretty. And you know, we can't expect fluid, beautiful football. Uh, but that's also not us. You know, our, yeah. our our chaotic aspect is really the the highest positive that we have. It's just got to be more chaotic. That's just what they have to do. Yeah, a shout out Connor Dobre. I love the chaos. Is what he loves says. The chaos, uh, that kid. Loves the chaos. He's he's hoping for every upset in the Euros, every upset <laughs> in the Copa America. Um, but yeah, I I think it's going to test the resolve of the squad over yeah. the next couple of weeks because there there are reinforcements coming, but we do just have to get through. The next what month? Uh, literally, month from today literally, is when reinforcements yeah. come. So we have to get through it. Um, my my expectations are zero, just like you said. Um, we're sitting in a precarious spot right now because we're like exactly average in the MLS. We're sitting in like eleventh place of like the league. Um, so halfway down the pecking table, we have the lowest amount of wins. We have the highest amount of ties. We're just incredibly average at the moment and we do have the pos- possibility over the next month to like super 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 regress um i will and i promise you i promise you um on this podcast for the next month if we come away from games picking up a point a tie i will be positive over the next month because we're we're missing some really big guys huge injuries um and we're gonna have to figure out how we play now differently like we're not going to be able to rely on any of these guys that we've been able to rely on. So if we come across from these games over the next month with a point, I will say it could be worse because I think we're maintaining until we get to the point of July 17th, which is a little bit um, just a peek behind the curtain for the listeners. Like we have a, a group chat obviously for this podcast and the greater Mecca of banter community that we have um, that's really active all the time. And there was definitely a little bit of, uh, turning of our group chat this morning um, with some positivity. Obviously, the last couple of weeks, as you've been listening, you know that we've been incredibly frustrated. And it, this isn't like a we're done being frustrated conversation because we're still frustrated. We expect at least something out there on the field. However, um, we know about, you know, Tukert uh, coming in July 17th. We know two, about, yeah. is it Tukert, so, Tushert? Two year. Two year, maybe I think the CH is year. Matt Baker STL, tell us how to pronounce it. Two uh, year, shout out Matt Baker. Yeah, um, we know he's coming in. We know that Jake from Australia, however you say his last name, <laughs> he's, he's our coming version in. of 
Yeah, our version of Jake, Jake from, from State Farm. Jake from Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jake oh, from Australia. From Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 just uh, a couple of shrimp on the barbie. Um, good night, good night, night. mate. Uh, so he's coming in July 17th. And then the latest that we hear is that Marcel Hartl, um from the Bundesliga 2 should be, it's not finalized, but should be coming in July 17th. Um, and from everything that we're reading on this guy, Hartle is the signing that we have been like, begging for now for a year and a half um he in the bundesliga two put out double digits in both goals and assists last year if you're an eafc player he had a team of the season card this year he was that guy in the bundesliga two if he put up the same numbers in the premier league we'd be t- talking about balloon de or season um he's from what we hear he's the cat's meow um, and he plays anywhere across the front three, but he is that creator, that goal scorer. And there is a world come July 17th where Klaus definitely turns into the guy because there are guys around him that are able to combine and play with them. So there is some good news coming in for the next, you know, July 17th and onward. And then we do have to shout out that allegedly, I don't know, I haven't seen team communication on it, but allegedly a deal for AZ Jackson has been done with Columbus to for him to go to Columbus for 650000 um, which is also a really positive, uh, positive in, in, in our opinion, uh, for all parties. It's really positive that, that he'll be going there. So it's not all doom and gloom uh, on this podcast today. It's not. Um you know, Hartle, I look, you can you can take whatever you want out of a two and a half minute YouTube comp of, of a guy's season. But when he has seventeen different goals in in considerably different fashion, almost all of them. There's yeah, screamers in, the in there season. in the, in the same, same season. season. Yeah. Yeah. There's screamers in there. There's headed goals. There's tap ins. There's back post runs. He's got so much creativity to find teammates. That one's changed about everything for me. This yeah. guy is the DP10, and and from what we understand, would be a DP slot, slot. that we fill yeah. with him. Um, there, there's there's some real there's some real hype around there, and and mm-hmm. to double down on how important and and quality I think he is. The only other communication on transfer media uh, for teams that were interested were. Uh, unnamed French teams in the Champions League. So we're we're talking not about bad. some nah, not bad. We're talking about some real cash here. And little old St. Louis out here in, in the Midwest the United States. You know the vibes, so, baby. Um the the hype on that is insane. Um I feel better with, with two year coming in still, regardless. And I do think, you know, with him not playing a ton recently, I, I don't know at all if what, what that looks like for him. He's probably got some good rest, and I'd like to think, you know, we may not to be we may not be able to inject him immediately, but over the span of the next, you know, month or two after the transfer window, I'd like to think he's playing ninety a lot, um, a lot. You know, without he didn't take on the brunt of the first half of the season. He had a real summer break, uh, and yep. you know, he should be able to re- to come in and and fire. So those two guys additions, uh, you know, two years happening. No, nothing confirmed on Hartle. Um, that's really, really positive. And, and 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 we tweeted it out earlier today, but it shows that ownership's not ownership's not happy. Like this is this is what happens. You shake things up. We're, you know, this is our uh, winter transfer season, essentially. Yeah. Like January. Yeah. This is January for us. So, you know, that's what really capable clubs do when when you see obvious gaps, injuries come up. Um, you know, form's not great. You make moves. Um, I, I do, you know, peace and love to AZ Jackson. I think he gave us some super awesome moments last year. Um, and I'm sure that he would agree he didn't really get up to speed this year. And, I, you know, I don't think we were hoping there was, you know, progress and, and building on last year. And there's not really been. Um, yeah. So, you know, hopefully a change of scenery for the kid is great. Uh, he's been, you know, uh, an, ad- an admirable member of the first season, you know, pumped to see him come in and, and kind of, you know, be able to contribute for a guy who nobody knew before. And I want to say we spent, don't, don't double check me here on this, but 
I want to say we spent like one fifty in in general allocation money to get him from Minnesota, and we're turning it around for six fifty. So yeah, that's good bad. business. I think there was a twenty percent sell on clause. Someone on Twitter said John on Twitter said uh, and called me out on that one. So Shout out John. You know, we're not going to get all of that back, but the way that it's played out thus far is that Hartle's discovery rights, stupid fucking rule, if you ask me. Stupid. That is the, that is the dumbest shit I have ever heard. Um, yeah. Are, they're held by, by Columbus. So <laughs> uh, essentially, in my mind and a lot of other people's minds on, on social media is that this is something of a swap. And, you know, they're more or less paying us to pay them for these discovery rights. Um, and then from there, it's it's pretty much on us. And, and none of that happens until it becomes official. So we won't know for a bit. Um, you know, I, I guess I guess he sat out the last game for St. Pauli's season, which was interesting. He wasn't even there and they and they got promoted like it. There's some weird stuff, I think, going on there. But, um, you know, I'm hoping that this is Lutz and the ownership saying, Something's got to happen, yeah, dude. and yeah, and then yeah. ready and to put guys, it on Carnell. These guys are also twenty-seven and twenty-eight years old. Tuchert yeah. and, and Hartle, like they're not thirty-five coming yeah. to the league, like at the end of their career, they're in their primes. You know, as as the center attacking midfield, you know, center forwards, like twenty-seven, twenty-eight is like prime years for those guys, and it's when they've figured out their bodies, they figured out the mental side of the game. So, like. We're getting them at really, really good stages of their career. And then also just like a fun little tidbit is like they played with Leuven on the U21 Germany team. So like there has to be some level of like, I mean, not, not, not saying that just because they play together, they're best friends, but there has to be some level of like familiarity and like Rari, happiness. That comes a little from, bit. Yeah, like, yeah, that they're getting the boys that, together. So. The yeah. boys are back in Central the West and Missouri. Yes. Come on, city boys. Uh, Come on. So, Come on, we're we're excited with that, and and with Jackson, just like you said, it hasn't exactly worked out this year. But he'll he'll go as long as it happens, and he'll get he'll get clapped. I don't know if it'll be a you know standing ovation, but he'll get clapped when he gets subbed on against St. Louis. Yeah. Like, what well, the the city will have a soft spot for him, and and I think I think for the guys um, for the guys who like really pay attention to like all the shit you know, on, on the game, like, you know, that it wasn't working out. So it's probably just happening at the perfect time before the rest of the, the fan base really jumps on his back of, of it's not working out. Cause you do, you, you do want those guys to hit those heights. You do want, you yeah. do want guys who played for St. Louis city to go on and achieve great things. Cause fact of the matter is like, whether they were great for us or not, if they become great and St. Louis is at, you know, on their resume, it's always a good look. It's always a good sign for the future future of being able to attract talent so an interesting month lies ahead for st louis city and uh, i don't really know what to ex what to expect um seems like a lot of the fan base has caught on to the carnell out uh wave um we, hey, we weren't we, that wild when we threw it out the first place and and I'm we saying. said this last week we said this last week it's not it's not the specific it, it, you know, the results are the results. We like to win. Everyone wants to win. We need to be higher up the table. That's that's a fact that everybody can agree with. People that are like, originally, they were like, way too soon, way too soon, what's happened that you that you would place all this blame on him? And we said this last week. It's the lack of ability to adjust and, and the yeah. lack of ability to change the way you play when what you're doing is not working. And we've yeah. seen it. And, you know, uh, Chat City Tactics, Michael shouted it out. Like, we, when we've had more possession of the ball, 51 or 52%, yeah. you know, or higher, we've not won a game. That's a very Zero. simple way to look at the, you know, whoever's coming into City Park for them to be like, all right, well, let's sit. Let's hand the ball over. Let's hit them on the counter. And, you know, we probably walk out of there with some points. So, yeah. it's if it's obvious to us, it's it should be. You know, it, it's working its way into what I believe is, you know, mainstream. And, and we've got this good feeling around the club that we've had since the beginning because everything was so great last year. Everything was so great. We're in the dog days now. And yeah. this is when this is when the real banters come out. And this is when we stand on our business, which is yeah. Carnell out. And I don't yeah. think this changes anything. I do think the reinforcements coming in might save his ass. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. They totally. should. 
if if they if we make the playoffs and maybe win a game in the playoffs, he's not going anywhere. And no. to be fair, probably shouldn't. I'm okay with that. Um, but you know, if we watch more of the the same shit that we've been watching, like this guy's got to take some responsibility. There's been nothing really that I've seen that's been back to him. Be like, all right, so explain those three subs. We we looked pretty good in this Dallas game, and then the subs came in, and yeah. then we didn't look that good. Um, yeah. And whether that's a formation issue, whether that's tactics, whether that's the personnel itself, I don't even really know where to pinpoint it in this Dallas one because I'm like you, kind of blacked out for all of this. Yeah. Like, oh. Saley went down. Uh, uh, Nilsson gives up the pen. Didn't watch the pen. I could not stand to watch Jesus Ferrer score a goal pen. in front of me on my TV. Not a pen. Not Never a pen. A pen. That's no. physical center back play. He did not drop his shoulder a lick. No. He just no. ran. And Paul Ariel is yeah. five five ass, just fucking <laughs> fell over. And that's what we call the pen. So yeah, that bad. wasn't a pen. He goes down. We don't get the handball the other way. Like that's that one. Brother, what was that? It, it, it wasn't it wasn't an ad- inadvertent deflection off this no. guy's knee where he didn't know anything about it. He kicked the ball and the ball hit his hand. <laughs> that's what happened. Every time we've gotten a handball and on us in the box, it's been a pen, regardless of whether or not we thought it was. And this one doesn't even get a look, bro. Yeah, bad. It was Miss bad. Miss me. Miss me. <laughs> it's, it's not good. Uh, it's not good. And it continues to not get good. Um, I, I tweeted uh, saying that the only thing worse than a Celio injury is the fact that Thor is going to be playing a lot more. Thor is going to start on Wednesday. You just know that it's going to happen. Um, I don't need to beat the drum on this podcast. We'll be right back here next week talking about a double game where we'll watch Thor play twice uh, for extended minutes. Um, he's not good. It's not. I hope, I hope we eat our words. That's the only thing that yeah, I can say. I hope he say scores a brace point. in both games and yeah. he comes specifically so, to my section and gives me a double flick off. Uh, that would be it. good. I'll, That'd be so good. I'll kiss him on the mouth. I don't know. I'll do yep, something. You're right, but like, sir. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump Thank down you. there and, and <laughs> I'll be St. Louis City Park's uh, first pitch invader. I'll, that'll but be me. We're going to get you a scores. headband that you don't properly yeah, wear so that you fix your hair every five minutes. It's gonna get, be, you're going to be Thor number one fan. On my body. Uh, <laughs> but w- the issue is it's not just the injury to Celio and to Nilsson. It's also all. Um, we don't have any nah. depth again in those positions. So truly, we are going to be relying on Johnny Klein, short-term contract. Like There's that uh, rule where I think it's like three features in – the 11 or six features. I don't know how many it is. It's something like that before they have to stay permanently with the team. So obviously they're going to bounce around a couple of different guys. My guess is McSorley uh, will be on the bench for one of them, you know, whatever. But the next month is going to be very interesting. Um, In July 17th, a month from today, uh, hopefully things get better for St. Louis. That's all we can hope. And like you said, we're praying for results in any capacity points on the board. I don't care what we do. I don't care how they look. I you I want Klaus to just fall over in the box every opportunity he gets because 100%. we're going to need something. We we need Lowen to just score some free kicks. Frankly, that's yeah. That's how I see this going. Yeah. Hit a banger. Um Copa America, right around the corner, big fella. It's right around the corner and uh a week ago we were uh not exactly uh, optimistic because we got obliterated uh, by Colombia, the United States, that is. And then we turned it around with a 1 1 victory, not a well, felt like a victory, but a 1 1 really tie did. against Brazil. It felt amazing um, with the Pulisic banger uh, from the free kick. Um, How did you feel watching the 1 1 tie against Brazil? Was there any bit of optimism leaving that game, or you still feel exactly the same way? I put the house on three goals in that game. Oh, yeah, so, so did I. That, that was so, shit. That so was so I'm, I'm not going to front. I watched a lot of that game through a pretty negative uh, viewpoint. I hate watching. <laughs> I, I hate watching the United States of America because cause Matt Turner decides to have the most saves in a single game since yeah. Tim Howard did it against Belgium in 2014. Like, I mean, genuinely one of the best men's keeper performances in years, um, mm-hmm. that's positive. You can take that 
And and we're the United States of America, brother. We are gonna rely on a good keeper because we're just not. We're just net. We've never been that team. We relied, you know, Tim. Uh, Tim Howard was our savior, over and right. over and over, and game after yeah. game after game. So that's fine. I like that Matt Turner stepped up, and and from this yeah. point of view, he's locking himself in as the number one. Hopefully, you know, he gets some really good form through the Copa and, and can start for Nottingham Forest in the future. Um, you know, there's positivity around that that I really liked. Um, there was one or two buildups that we had through Brazil that were <laughs> disgusting. Or um, <laughs> there was There was a, a 90 second clip, I think maybe even a little longer, and, and it was 15 ish passes, and it was immaculate buildup things that i've never seen this this team do um i'm pissed that we're relying on tim ream but also yeah. st louis boy love him that's my dog he played Ooh. incredibly well he was awesome um, he was awesome he was so good and his buildup and and the way that he could i mean he, a cruyff turn in the box on rodrigo against brazil brother why not why not, why not? That was ridiculous, and that set yeah. up a lot of the what we could do out of the back. So there are positives. I think you can look at the body of work in that game. You can also very much so say Brazil sucked. Like that, that was yeah. just not really they. You know, Got out Ronaldinho one time. Ronaldinho, all it took was one Burhalter draw for this man to go full head loss. One, of the, <laughs> one of the greatest Brazilian players of all time to just completely lose it. On the social media. Them out. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable response. He, by the way, yeah, for listeners, Ronaldinho came out and said he wasn't going to watch one game of the Copa America because there's no one on this <laughs> team that has the passion or energy to play uh, with the Brazil badge on their chest. And the quality sucks. He, he, he absolutely tore him apart. Berhalter ball, baby. <laughs> and it was because of Greg Berhalter. So uh, yes. no defense for that guy. But there are positives. I think Christian – Christian looked good, and, uh, you know, of course, we're going to rely on him. That is what it is. We relied on Dempsey and Donovan for forever. The, oh. Everyone else just has to do their job. Um, so, yes, there's good things. Do I think we get super far in Copa America? No, we lost Chile, or uh, Colombia, 5-1, which was, which was just a miserable showing. Um, but, you know... You take what you get out of that game. You have to build on it. Like you, they're rewatching those buildups. They're rewatching the moments that they should have maybe had, and they're like, "This is what we can do against some of the best opposition in the world. This is what we have to do um, yeah. because we're gonna we're gonna go up against it. There's no way around it." Yeah, uh, we'll see what version of the United States comes out. Um, will it be the Colombia version? Will it be the Brazil version? If it's the Brazil version, I feel pretty confident that we'll be able to. Definitely advance out of the group. We'll beat those lesser teams. And just like in the World Cup, we face, you know, a pretty challenging team like we did Netherlands in the round of 16 or whatever it was. And we were outclassed. But, like, my worry is that we're going to go into our group and not even advance out of the group because we're going to play like we did against Colombia. Yeah, but that's the biggest concern. But, you yeah, know. It, it truly is. It, it truly is. The I think we play a team like Brazil. We play a team like Argentina. We lose. We can say. I'm putting my hands on. up and saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What do you What sure. are you thinking, man? What are you thinking? Yeah. But should we yeah, beat we... Bolivia? Yes. Should Honey. we beat Should we beat Panama? Yes. Yeah. And like, like we should beat them. We should like have yeah. a convincing victory. We should that, do that. That's not in Greg Berhalter, Berhalter's locker. His locker is to get out of there with three points if we can at best. So I'm not expect like it, it. It was the same way with Iran, and it was the same yes. way like when with Wales, bro. Like. There were so many opportunities where I felt we should just be balling, and we weren't. It, yeah. it was just an absolute grind. So that's that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting the World Cup team and how they performed and what we looked like there to really kind of replicate Copa America. I think Bolivia is going to be a grind. I think Panama is going to be a grind. I think we probably lose to Uruguay, but I don't want to get embarrassed. I'd like to keep it tight. I'd love a draw out of that game. Yeah. Um, you know, but but get through that. That's it. And then look at your next steps yeah. and look at the game forward. You, you can't I'm very curious of what's going to happen with Tyler. Um, you know, obviously Michael was on here last week saying that he doesn't want Tyler to play. Um, I'm very curious of if, if he's going to play because I think you throw Tyler back into the equation. 
I feel a lot better against teams like Uruguay or yeah. teams like, you know, Brazil, even though we, we had a good performance against Brazil, I feel even better with Tyler and they're kind of breaking things up, but you just don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, you just don't know. No nope. lineup was strong. You know, at, at some point, the, the one thing that I can give Greg Berhalter credit on is he's getting lineups, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think his in-game changes and substitutions deserve any credit at all. Shaq Moore playing against Brazil Shaq is hysterical. Moore. And then he swapped yeah. kits with Vinny. Shaq yeah. Moore got to swap kits with Vinny. And every yeah. fucking... Uh, Seven minutes or face. whatever it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, Joe Scally. You know, Joe Scally played admirably, uh, calling him a... if I was Joe Scally. Yeah, been pissed. I mean, po- yeah. pocketing Vinny is not the way that I would put uh, what he did, but he was fine. He sustained yeah. Vinny. Um, and again, I think Brazil was pretty lackluster, frankly, with the the whole performance. But that was an A team, like that was a team that we're yep. going to see in in the Copa. Um, yep. So good result, felt like a win. Mm-hmm. Take it, take it, build on it, run. Don't shit the bed against take Bolivia. It. That's, it. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, Argentina leads it off. Uh, is it a Thursday kickoff for them or a Friday kickoff? Yep. I'm not. I don't remember. I think it's Thursday. Um, yep, Thursday Saturday against Kyle Hebert against hey. Kyle Hebert, Jesse Marsh. Uh, shout out to the man, Mr. Missouri State, Kyle Hebert. Um, really, really cool to be called up to the Copa America. He's been called up to two camps, um, but you don't know what's going to happen. I think it just shows, again, that coaches love that guy. Um, yeah. We talked what's not last week on, on who's going to be the longest tenured player at, at St. Louis City. And, you know, we talked about Kyle and uh, coaches love him. I'm just so stoked for that guy. Congratulations to Kyle. Um, and last but not least, Mr. Hoover, uh, the Euros kicked off um, uh, the other day. We've had a ton of games. Almost all of the group stage games have happened. Um, I think tomorrow is the last day of the group stage where we have Portugal playing. But um, so far, uh, who has surprised you, whether it was good or bad? Who surprised you in the Euros? Um, let's see. I, I think today and is it really a surprise like is belgium just overrated as shit dude yeah, like they are. 100%. They, this golden generation is a joke it's embarrassing yeah. their golden generation was prime eddie and jeco or, or, or not <laughs> uh, Jekko. Eddie Bosnia Jekko. came over to play yeah <laughs> uh prime ed and hazard um and he's you know 32 and not playing football and you know, somewhere in the Maldives, but, um, they were bad. Like they, they, they weren't good. Um, you know, so I think I'm not, I'm shocked that they lost today because seriously, that group's not that hard. They should, they should be beating this team. I think this is, uh, the, the, the biggest upset in terms of FIFA ranking at a Euro. I think Slovakia is like 47th. And Belgium's third, which stupid. Yeah. They should never be third. That's dumb. No. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I think they've also like they've held the number one title for a lot of years as well. Like for the what? number one country in the world. I don't know. It's with weird. what merit does that come with? Yeah, like I don't they know. didn't win shit, and everything that they've done in a major competition recently sucked. So that <laughs> that makes no sense to me. Um, I did not get to watch Romania today. But mm. it sounded electric. It sounded like they yeah. balled. Uh, I have Boy, genuinely Drago. no idea. Dra- Dude, yeah. Radu looked great. Uh, I, I did watch a minute and a half clip of, of his highlights. He did look good. Um, you know, I, there's not a lot of other, I think, crazy surprises. Croatia getting Croatia losing 3-0 to, to Spain was a little bit of a surprise. But I think Spain balled. It's yeah. like, you know, you, you could tell me. I saw a tweet. You could tell me Alvaro Morata was 35 or 25. I'd be like, yep. You could tell me he played at AC Milan, Napoli, Al Nassar, or LA Galaxy. I'd be like, yep, yeah, definitely. Like, I, I don't know, I, whatever. A guy just shows up to these tournaments and plays. Well, so, um, you know, I, nothing, nothing super crazy. England is so boring. England is so are. boring, dude. Like, and this is the last time I ever gamble on them because I genuinely, like, Southgate is Greg Berhalter in a suit and tie. Like, it it's it's identical. It's insane. The the you know, my favorite term ever is he's got the keys to the Ferrari and he can't put it in drive. Like he really has the best team 
in this in this competition probably in my eyes and he can't get it to work bro no i could go in there and have harry kane and phil foden fucking figure it out are you kidding it, it it's so be that weird. hard like what's the problem like i don't understand it. it like it it looked like to me that jude bellingham was the same jude bellingham that we saw at real madrid except for maybe he had a little bit more freedom with england because i feel like with real madrid you have tony cruz who's that like what's it called like yeah. a metronome uh, that's what it is like he sets the oh, tempo yeah. team like yeah. he's able to dictate that but jude was amazing he was everywhere he was all over the field he was picking up two yard passes to do what he did like he was really good but all of the other players around him just looked like a shell of themselves for who they were for their clubs like yeah. maybe with the exception of jared bowen who when jared bowen came on i was like why on earth is that the choice? Because, like, I would bring on, I don't know, three other players other than him. Yeah. But to be fair, he he played well, like, made a really dangerous cross for Harry. But Harry and Phil Foden were non-existent in the game. Like, it literally, he had, Kane had two touches in the first half. Two touches, not just yeah. two passes or two shots. Two touches. Um, For our, our betting people, Hoover and I both bet that Harry Kane would have over uh, one and a half shots on goal from Harry Kane. Uh, and I felt so supremely confident about that. I felt so confident on it. And he had two touches in the first half and I was sick. I was, I was so sick, um, but they are boring. Um, you know, a couple of us chose them as our, um, the biggest flop of the tournament last week at, in our preview that they're going to be the biggest flops. And it looks like it may just happen. I mean, yes, yes, they came away with the win. So, like, they got three points, they got the shutout, but it wasn't convincing in any any facet. And then I'm not even, like, sitting here being like, he should have put out a different lineup. He should have whatever. It's just whatever tactics he's telling them to play with, it just is not – it's just not working. He could play any combined 11 out of the squad that he has, and and I'd be like, sure. You know, like, there's obvious – there's, there's obvious, yeah, they should be doing better. There's obvious players that, that you know, should be starting. The, the you know, Premier League player of the year, the the Bundesliga highest goal scorer of the year. Like, like, people need to be on the field that deserve it. But, like, you could play all the subs, bro, and I would just still expect more out of it. Like, it was yeah. not a personnel thing. It's boring. Uh, they're tacky, yeah. I, it's boring. It's lame. Um, and I still think they flop. For sure, there, there's yeah. just, there's just, it's like St. Louis, brother. There was, there's nothing that this guy's done that's given anyone in the England camp excitement. Like they made it to the Euro final, you know, the previous one, the delayed one, but it wasn't like they were just fucking dogging teams. Like yeah. it, it's just this grind out three points, look bad, you know, fashion yeah. that, that they play. So, you know, I still think they bought them out. I think Belgium does too. Yeah, I, I, I think it happens. I will say from the England squad, I want to shout out Mark Gahey. I thought he was awesome in that game. He won all of the duels. He had a, a bunch of line-breaking passes. Uh, I don't think he stays at Crystal Palace going into this next season. It'll be fascinating to see where he goes, but he was really good. Um, but for me, the, the, the biggest surprise to me was Germany. Um, yeah. And I know that people chose them to – win the whole thing um but you have to remember the last two tournaments that they've played in they have not been maybe three tournaments i i feel like that's accurate back to the 2018 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like yeah like they have not been good and to put five goals in and not just five goals they looked incredible they looked like everything that you wanted from that germany squad um, all of the dogs showed up and showed out. It was so cool to see um, the fucking Michael's call of Nicholas Fulkrug uh, winning the golden boot. Uh, it looks great. Yeah. Two goals coming in. Like, good for him. It looks great. Um, Musiala, bald. Um, Florian Verts, bald. Tony Cruz, bald. Um, they were my surprise so far of the group stage. They looked really good. Um, and I cannot wait for tomorrow to watch Bruno Fernandez kick off his European uh, tournament. I think it's going to be really fun. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to por- Portugal. I think I had them. Uh, I have them winning. And and after I made that guess, they played a friendly. Uh, I don't. I don't really remember who they played even, but they looked. Doesn't matter. They looked good, and you know yeah. who else looked good? For sure, yeah, Ronaldo. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm gonna think. I'm thinking we're seeing him tomorrow. And okay, so we 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 <laughs> last week on the pod like talked a bunch of shit on Ronaldo. If Ronaldo plays, Portugal's gonna get knocked out. If he doesn't play, they're yep. gonna win the whole thing. And then like we specifically clipped up this clip for TikTok and Instagram to come out like right before the Portugal friendly and talking shit on Ronaldo. And then he scores two goals and plays out of his mind. And we got roasted in the comments for that. <laughs> like, and it just happens that way sometimes, but Portugal against Czechia, which by the way, I didn't know that Czechia was a way to say Czech Republic, but whatever. Uh, I That's literally new. Googled this. Mo- yeah. I Googled this morning is Czechia and Czech Republic, the same thing, but yeah, that's uh, new. And so is Turkey. It yeah, is Turkey. no longer Turkey. It is Turkey. Turkey. So. Uh, my dark horses of Turkey, they kick off. Turkey against Georgia is just a funny, funny game. Yeah. <laughs> you know who's just a psycho like, and is probably going to watch it? Me. <laughs> like, who's going to bet on it? <laughs> <laughs> probably me. <laughs> probably me. Absolute um, toss up. <laughs> yeah, but we have uh, so much footy uh, coming up over the next couple of weeks with the Copa, with the Euros. The MLS season is getting into crunch time. A lot of teams play Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday at this time of the year. And then don't forget, we have that unbelievable tournament in a month called the League's Cup that we have to look forward to uh, with St. Louis hey. City. What? Hey, come on. <laughs> That's a stinker. Uh, U.S. Open Cup forever. Forever and ever and ever. So backwards. Uh, listeners, I want to remind you that you can get 20% off and free shipping worldwide at manscaped.com using the code MECCA20. That's M E C C A 2 0. Uh, summertime and trimming is easy, ladies and gentlemen. Manscaped, thanks for uh, sponsoring today's podcast. Uh, check us out on the Twitter, the yeah. Instagram, the Social medias that we have, I think the that's. Talk. Oh yeah, the TikTok. We have talk. a couple of those. You and I were you and I were double tweeting the St. Louis City game too, which is also hilarious because sometimes we're pretty like spot on of what we think the majority yeah. of the time. Yeah. Sometimes we're not, yeah. and that's really funny. That's it hilarious, is. especially when um, you and I are back to back, like sending identical tweets, and then one <laughs> comes out, and it's like we have a completely different opinion. Yeah, on what, <laughs> completely on what different. We should be. Um, next week, we hope that you know more than just the two of us will be on it. But if you get to see us again next week, then hey, lucky you. You know, um, whatever. Actually, I think you're out of town next week. I is am, that what I you mean, said the, today? I, I think I maybe think it'll I'm just probably be out. Me. Yep. And Unreal. actually, oh, it's Sunday that USA plays uh, at five. So. Uh, we'll have plenty to talk about on Monday if I get to so watch much. the kicker. Yep. Ooh, 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 that's exciting. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll catch you all next week. Cheers. Yeah, yeah.